Welcome back to another video, guys. Today, um, I kind of went back to the backlogs of some content I wanted to cover, and I wanted to make a video on doing a knife with hidden pins. Um, kind of a simple idea, but I wanted to break it down for you guys and kind of show you my take on it. I've done it one time in the past, and we're gonna cover it in today's video uh, with a really cool new design. So stick around if you wanna learn how to do hidden pins. And also, I've got some really cool information at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around to the end. You're not gonna wanna miss it. So if you guys follow along over on Instagram, you know I've, I'm always coming out with new designs and new models and trying out new things. And I don't think I've talked about this one yet, um, but this is what I'm calling the pocket muck. Now, uh, the lighting's kind of bad right there, but as you can see, it's a little kind of Nesmuk design with a big belly. I've got some good jimping up there. Um, and this is the mid-size one. You can see it's a really good full grip knife. Your whole hand fits in it. Kind of a skinny profile. Um, and this was designed to be kind of a pocket carry unique fixed blade. And also one you could throw in your pack, take hunting with you, and be able to skin out an animal with it really good. Now, this is the mid-size. And then this is the micro muck right next to it. Sorry, it's kind of rusty and nasty. I haven't started on it yet. But as you can see... About a half inch shorter blade, smaller profile. Still fits in your hand pretty good. Um, but yeah, that one fits in your pocket really nice. And then I've also got a full size Nesmuk design that I don't have here to show you. But anyways, today's video, we are going to make some hidden pin scales for this design. I've already ground the bevels. As you can see, I went with a full flat grind which is not showing up super good. And I went with a really kind of unique dark blued and distressed finish on that blade. Now, the reason I did that is this is a high carbon steel blade and I'm no longer really selling any satin finished high carbon steel. It really just, it, unless the customer really requests it. Um, and this one, if it all turns out, is going to be a raffle knife. So that's what I'm gonna talk about at the end of this video, how you guys can get in on this and possibly win this knife for about $5 a ticket is what I'm planning on. So kind of a multi-purpose video we're doing today. Um, I've got some really, really nice maple burl scales that I saved. You can see really nice figuring in there, natural stabilized maple burl we're gonna do for the scales, hidden pins. This should be a really cool build if it all works out. Um, so let's get into it. All right, so the whole general idea of this is uh, I'm gonna be using the normal pinholes, these are quarter inch pinholes and a quarter inch lanyard tube. And I think for this one, just to keep it really clean, I'm not even gonna put a lanyard tube in it. Um, now, what I normally do, obviously, as you have seen in the past, is I do a quarter inch pin, goes all the way through. You see it on both sides of the scales. Now, with this idea, it's we are gonna drill through this into our scale material just far enough to give it a little bit of support, but you don't want to drill so far through it um, that your pin shows through once you start shaping these scales. Now, the kind of uh, only problem I have with doing this is I feel like with those pins going through the whole knife and both scales, it gives it uh, a little bit more structure, I guess you could say. Um, so I want to come up with a couple ways with this to make sure that epoxy has a lot to bind to um, and to where it's just really structurally sound so those scales never uh, have a problem with popping off or anything. So let's get into it. First step is laying out the handles on the scale material. And as you can see, I've done that right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this up just kind of like this and get those holes drilled. And I think there's a lot of ways to do this. You could set your drill press stop to where it only goes in as far as you want. And that will depend on how thick of handles you want it. Um, I think you want your pin to go into your scale material as far as possible. You don't want, like I said, you don't want to push it too far and have it show when you go to uh, shape these scales, but you also don't want it too little to where you're not getting any structural uh, integrity from those pins. Uh, so that is up to your discretion. Take it as deep as you comfortably can. <laughs> so anyways, let's get this clamped up and get these holes drilled. Okay, so you can see here, we've got our knife clamped to our scale material. I put a little bit of tape on those flats when I'm drilling, uh, just to make sure I don't scratch those flats up because this is all finished. Um, and normally when I drill the holes for my scales, I have both scales clamped together and I can drill through 
both at the same time. Now, since we're doing these hidden pins, that's not possible. Um, but I am going to actually drill the lanyard tube on this a little bit as well and add a third pin in the back, like I said, just to really give this thing some structure. And I'm going to just eyeball this. When I drill this down, I'm going to just bring it in, like I said, just enough to where I know that pin's got something to bind to, um, but not too far. So let's get these drilled, these three holes drilled, and hope this all turns out good. Let's pop these off and kind of show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, I maybe could take it a little deeper, but that gives you an idea. And like I said, if you want to be real picky with this, you can set your drill press stop um, to just go down X amount, however far you want to take it. But I think that's deep enough to give those pins something to grab onto. And that should work out good. Let's do the other side. So you can see I've got my pins in now, and I just chose some black G10 pins, which obviously you're not going to see. Um, and they're in, and I've got it kind of roughed out to where I need to cut these scales. Okay, so the first problem with doing this is when I, gar when I go to shape my scales, I have my knife on it like this, and I a lot of times have both scales like this so I can shape them, get them cleaned up really good before I glue them up. And also I'm able to shape that front part of the scale that you see that you can't kind of access once it's glued up. Now, that's gonna be a problem with the hidden pins because I can't have both scales connected and have the knife attached where it goes properly. So that's gonna take a little finagling. But the first step is get this, get this wood cut out to where it's roughly the right size and everything like that. So we're gonna go over to the portable bandsaw, get these scales trimmed to fit, and then we're gonna figure out how to make the front of the scale uh, perfect and symmetrical and get that finished. Okay, so there you go. It's cut out real roughly just to fit. And the reason I kind of rough cut these out uh, before glue up, because obviously you guys know, once you have your knife glued up, you shape all this afterwards, you can remove material. Um, I like to get them as close as possible to the knife to make sure you have that front part uh, really nice and so it looks good after glue up. Not sure if that explained it right, but anyways, I cut those out. I use that portable bandsaw with a swag off-road table. It works really good. And these are the bandsaw blades I use. They're Lennox brand. And I'm not at all like sponsored by these guys or anything like that, but you can buy five blades and I think it's like $25 to buy five blades compared to I was buying the Milwaukee ones. And it's like $3 or three blades for a little more money. So I'll put a link below to those bandsaw blades. They last longer. Um, they're cheaper. They're a total win-win. So I've just recently started using those and I'm really, really happy with them. But anyways, so now I'm going to go over to the grinder, get these shaped real close to the profile of the blade on both sides. Um, and then we're going to figure out how to shape the front of these scales. So you can see I got the front of the single scale shaped kind of how I like it. Let me put this on the blade and show you guys kind of what it looks like. So you can see I match my plunge. I bring it down. That's how I do all my scales. Um, and like I said, doing these hidden pins, there's a few, it seems easy. And the reason I'm making this video is so if you have the idea to do this, you can watch what I'm doing. And it might kind of a couple little things I'm doing might help you guys out in the long run. Now, the key to this next step is I need to match this scale to this one. And to do that, I'm going to cut two more pins, but I'm going to make them short enough to where when I go to put these scales together, which right now you can see I have a gap there, which that gap is normally taken up by the blade thickness. I'm going to cut two more pins and take that thickness off so these scales will sit flush together. That way I can match this scale 
to this scale on the grinder without the blade in there, clean this up, this front part, really nice, and they'll both match when I go to install them on the blade, if that makes any sense. All right, so now, if I did this right, um, this should all line up good, and I should be able to, here, I'm putting this back on here. There, clipped in good, and oh yeah, it looks sweet. So there you can see it's really flush and clean. I matched that plunge perfectly with my scale. I brought it back to expose the jimping, both sides are even, and it worked out good. So now it's time to put these scales back together with our short pins. And we are going to hand sand the flats. Well, I guess that's what you'd call it. This part right here, hand sand that. Um, with this wood, I'm gonna take it to 2000 grit. And then we're gonna three stage buff it and those will come out really nice and you'll never have to worry about that spot after glue. Yeah, that's gonna look really good. So as I get these hand sanded, um, I think this is all gonna work out good. And I think that uh, if you guys are watching this video, you, you come to YouTube to learn and a lot of people kind of have this way of teaching that this is the way to do it. And if you do it another way, you know, they look down on you. I make these videos to try to share um, a lot of my thought process on doing things. I've never heard or learned or talked to anybody about doing hidden pins. This is just my way of doing it and kind of figuring it out as we go. So if you watch this video and you say, Matt, why are you doing it this way? Why are you doing it this way? I don't know. That's just the way my brain works. And I'm doing it for a way that I know this knife will perform properly um, and there's not gonna be any failures. If you have any other tips and tricks, always feel free to drop them in the comments for me. I appreciate that. And also uh, just a quick shout out to everybody that signed up for that Patreon account I talked about last week. There will be a link below for it. Um, that's the reason I'm able to do these videos and experiment with new processes and kind of gain skills as I go along with you guys. So I cannot thank you guys enough. There's already 10 people signed up for it, which is awesome. Um, so if you haven't already, go sign up for that Patreon account. And if you wait around till at the end of this video, I'm gonna hopefully finish this knife and I'm gonna explain to you guys something really, really cool that might be a little bonus for you guys to sign up. All right, we got our fronts cleaned. It's looking really good and buffed. Now the next step is, uh, let's see if I can get these apart. <sighs> Making sure that when I glue these scales up, I'm 100% confident that they will never have a problem. And I think what I'm going to do is, I'm over at the drill press here, I've got an eighth inch bit in right now, and I'm gonna drill as many little holes in the side that's going to the knife as possible. And my thought on this is that will give that epoxy something to seep into and just kind of create a little more structure with that bond on that epoxy. Now, just like our pinholes, I'm not gonna go very deep um, and I'm not going to take it too close to the edge so I don't mess these up. But as many as I can fit in here without causing a problem, uh, is it necessary? Probably not, but I'll feel really good about it, I think, when it's uh, all said and done. There you go. Scuffed with a 60 grit sandpaper right here that I just put on my uh, granite surface plate to keep it good and flat. 
and you can see all our little holes. Again, maybe not necessary, but gives me a little more peace of mind. So I'm gonna get this other side done. We're gonna clean this uh, really good, get these glued up, and uh, I'll check back in tomorrow with you guys. Start to shape these up, and let's hope it all turns out good. All right, so it's the next day. Uh, I'm gonna remove my clamps. You can use, I just use these little two inch C clamps normally to uh, keep those scales tight. And I use this epoxy. Highly, highly recommend this stuff. Blade Pro by System 3. Link in the description. That stuff's awesome. Works really, really good. Um, and so overall, this looks pretty good. If I can get this clamp off of here. I think that uh, everything I did worked out okay. I think that I'll know better once I get this shaped up. Everything, no gaps or anything like that. But uh, yeah, really happy with it. If you guys want to see how I got these glued up, um, I have a bunch of videos on that. Go back a few and I have one that's called how to install a handle on a knife or, or something like that. And that goes into it really, really detailed. And I'm trying to get to where I don't do things over and over and over in these videos. And I've already done that a lot. So there it is. You can see we've got no pins and we are ready to shape this up should be really cool i'm kind of liking the clean look of this so let's get this shaped up and uh i'll probably check back in once i do a final buff on this and show you how it looks Well guys, that's a wrap on this one. You can see I had these really cool little pocket sheaths made, leather ones from my buddy G Co Goods that I did that collab build with a while ago. Now these sheaths work for these pocket mucks and the micro mucks, but uh, turned out really cool. I think that the hidden pins worked out just like I was hoping it would with this build. I think that, you know, um, hidden pins have a pretty specific purpose. If you're building a knife and you really want to showcase some fancy scales, um, I think it's a cool option to be able to uh, do it. And you can see I went with, like I said earlier, kind of a uh, tumbled blued finish. I got the logo engraved. I got the double jimping on there. This is a really cool design. I'm liking it a lot. And I think that that little slip sheath works really well. That'll slide in your pocket and clip on right there. And there it is. So, like I said in the beginning of this video, um, this knife, since it did turn out exactly how I wanted, is going to be the next raffle knife that I put up over on my Instagram page. If you guys aren't following over there, make sure you go do go do it. Um, every couple months, I build a knife that is just on my mind and I put it up there for a raffle and it gives everybody an opportunity to own one of my knives for five or 10 bucks a spot, which is actually really cool and it's fun. So 
the uh, since you did stick around to the end of this video, um, you guys probably are interested in what I'm doing. And that's why I started that Patreon account for people that just appreciate what I'm doing and want to show a little bit of support. Now, there's a couple different options in there, a five, a 10 and the $25 monthly option. And for this video, if you watch this, you're still watching. If you sign up for the Patreon account right now, the $5 one, you get a free entry into the raffle for this knife. If you sign up for the high-end one, which I believe is $25 a month, you're not only going to get into this raffle, you also get a free ticket into every raffle I post over the next year, which is actually pretty cool. So I thought that would give you guys a little bit of a, a incentive to go sign up for that Patreon account. Um, I believe today's Wednesday. I'll probably be posting this raffle probably this upcoming weekend. Uh, so you got a couple days uh, to get in on it. If you don't want to sign up for the Patreon, just go over to my Instagram account. You'll see a link to my website to buy a spot for this raffle. Um, I think that covers it. I really appreciate you guys watching the channel and checking everything out. And um, if you have any questions, the other thing that's really cool is if you do sign up for that Patreon account, it gives you a direct message to me back and forth so you can email me and ask me questions on whatever project you're working on and I'll get back with you as soon as possible on that. So that being said, go sign up for the Patreon. Make sure you buy a couple spots for this raffle if you're able to. And thank you guys for watching.